G'day guys, Ben here from Solar and Sat, and today I'm here with Ken Wilson from Truck Friendly. Thanks Ben, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. What we've done to Ken's caravan here is we've removed his 150 watt solar panel, put a 400 watt solar system on, replaced his solar controller and brought it up to more modern standards. But uh, Ken, what, what made you decide to get the upgrade mate? I love my ice cream. <laughs> uh, my, we've got an older, older van, 2015, Jenny and I travel fairly light. Mm -hmm. So the old freeway fridge was reached the end of its life more than keeping the ice cream cold. Yep. We bought a brand new uh, compressor fridge and we've installed that. What we're finding now is that the 150 watt solar panel on the roof wasn't keeping the batteries charged enough to keep running the, the fridge. Makes sense. So we've come to the, the experts to um, <laughs> see what um, you, you would suggest mm -hmm. and uh, get it done correctly. How about we take a bit of a look at what we've done? That'll be great, thank you. Sweet. Have to excuse some of the mess in the background. We're prepping for our Melbourne expansion at the moment, so there's stuff everywhere. <laughs> so, well, obviously you've got two panels up here now, as opposed to the one. We were actually lucky enough to be able to reuse your existing brackets on that front one. So we've got a 200 water in exactly the same space as the old school 150. And as you can tell, we've done all new bracketry and wiring for the additional panel, of course, um, which is just here. Fairly impressed with the way that you've, you've sealed the, the brackets, etc. Fitting solar panels isn't necessarily a complex task, but there's probably a few key things that you want to really make sure you do well. And uh, obviously sealant is one of them. Um, yep. Yeah, you obviously never want to have a leak in your van. And uh, we go pretty, pretty far in terms of how we go about sealing it. What we do is we'll do a, the extreme sealing fix underneath the bracket which obviously does the, the weight holding and make sure it never flies off your roof. You can see where the boys have scrubbed the roof pretty thoroughly, where yep. we've glued to make sure that the glue adheres properly. Yep. Um, but then after we've done all that and it's set, we'll actually do a self-leveling sealant over the top of that. And that'll just make sure that there's absolutely no so water ingress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it stops lifting as time goes on and that sort of thing. It just protects the, the sealant that actually does the holding underneath. Yeah. Doing now the job. panels are off the off the roof for ventilation? Yes, exactly. With any of these sort of panels, if you fit them straight to the roof, what happens is it sort of superheats the air underneath. And a lot of people have in their head that, hey, a bright, hot, sunny day makes me, my panels work the best. Yep. But at the end of the day, it's actually just about light. As they get hotter, they actually work worse. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we have that gap underneath so that the heat can escape and they can get the sunlight and avoid the heat. Yep. Mm. Now, on, on the top of the roof, there's cyclonic winds, etc. when you're you're driving at 100 kilometers an hour and a truck comes the other way, um, we get a lot of wind gusts, etc. We can be quite excessive. What's been done to, to keep these on the roof? Because I was talking to Rick earlier and he was saying on his last trip to Melbourne, he noticed a few solar panels on the side of the road. Mm. Yes, so th there's a few things there. One of the biggest things we find is um, insufficient sealant or the wrong kind of sealant is a big part of it. Um, a lot of people go overboard in sending screws into their roof thinking that's going to do all the work. But screwing into this sort of, especially this sort of top here where it's not necessarily into runners or something like very that. very thin. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The screws themselves don't do a lot of the holding. Um, the sealant is really what's important. And then especially when you do place the sealant down, if you don't clean the roof thoroughly, you're just gluing to dirt. Yep. So obviously once you start driving and the truck goes past, off goes the panel. Um, so it's important that it's sealed for one. And the screws are also important because what they do is they pull the bracket to the roof to allow the sealant to do the job. Oh, yeah, yep. But in terms of the actual screws themselves, they're not doing a lot of the holding. And a lot of people overestimate, they, you know, they'll put in 10 screws and think that's enough and they'll just put a few blobs of sil silicon under it. Yep. Um, and silicon's obviously not necessarily the best in terms of strength. So you need something that actually has good adherence. So we're it. after an adhesive, not a, not a silicon sealant. Exactly, yeah, that's right. That, that's what I think where a lot of people go wrong. For sure. Is for they, sure. Uh, they say, well, what's, what sort of um, sealant or silicon should I use? Mm. Where they actually should be using an adhesive. We're trying to, trying to stick things together, not stop water getting in. Yeah, exactly. And then that's, that's where, obviously, ideally you get um, a unit that's good at both. So it you know, seals the water out and, and sticks it to the roof. And the idea is we seal that, um, that original adhesive underneath. It, in theory, doesn't even need our second layer to keep the water out. Yep. The purpose of that is one, it covers up all the screw heads and all that sort of stuff, but obviously it provides like a secondary layer of protection. It's kind of just like a guarantee. Because yep. on social media, you get a lot of people, they don't want to put screws in the roof because they don't want to create more holes. Mm. But the way, the way you do it and having a professional do it, you, you're sealing everything up. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. And, and whenever you put anything in, like you look at your vents, you look at your aircon, you look at your antenna, you've got screws going in everywhere. Yeah. The main thing is that you're intelligent about it and uh, you use the appropriate screws. Obviously, you don't go putting really long yeah. ones in yeah. or, or anything silly like that. Um, but the other thing too is, you know, if you lose a panel and all your, your crimps are done correctly, it's going to rip your wiring up too, yeah. which is going to damage where it goes through the roof. So um, okay. it's all stuff you have to consider. But th there's a lot of other sort of more nuanced things that people often don't think about either. We completely use aluminium brackets for everything. And the reason for that is they stay very close to the panel 
and it allows us to be uh, have more options in terms of where we place it. So yeah. you'll notice that we didn't perfectly line it up with that front panel, yep. and that's by design. We've pulled it further away from that aircon there, yep. and the idea is to prevent shading. So okay, yep. A lot of people don't realize that, yep. especially when they have cells on these panels wide in series, if you shade one cell substantially, it'll actually knock off a huge portion of the panel's charge oh, right. output. Yep. So if you jam it up against your aircon and it yep. shades those three cells, yep. well, you've just knocked out a huge amount of your performance. So by using these alley brackets instead of like the big plastic corner ones you often see, mm. it allows us to bring it further away and yep. sort of offset the shading. So you've sort of made me prompted now to uh, clean the rest of the roof, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those sure. things, especially th these kind of roofs can be tricky to clean. Yep. It it's one of those things, just a general sort of maintenance setup. It's only super important when you're actually sealing things. Yep. Um, yep. That's like I said, I can't like, stress enough. You know, we see people just dump sealant straight onto dirt. Yep. You you're straight away knocking out 75% of its strength, yeah. for sure. Well, it's a 2015 van, so it's probably in reasonable condition. We've, I'd agree. We've only, we've only had it a short time. But yeah, you're right, as for the age of the van, yeah, she's in great shape, especially the interior, um, which, speaking of, let's actually go have a look inside and we'll see what we've changed in there, huh? Okay. All right, what we've done is we've replaced the old uh, solar controller with the new Victron MPVT. Yep. Of course, the Victron units are known to be one of the most efficient ones on the market. So out with the old, in with the new, yep. um, and then we fitted up the solar isolator there as well to make sure we meet the new right the standards. Yep. yep, the new standards and regulations. Obviously, you can isolate the solar input there if you ever needed to. Especially with the Victron units functioning as a power supply, that can be handy if you're ever doing electrical work in here to be able to kill the solar as well as disconnect the battery bank. All right. Yes, that's mm. great. So we're, we've ended up basically more than doubling our solar capacity. For sure. Yep. Yeah. So, so that, that should help with the uh, with the fridge and the ice cream. Yeah, it certainly should. So yeah. you've gone from 150 watts, um, not only 150 watts, but 10 years old 150 watts, yep. up to a, a brand new modern 400 watt array. So yes. Substantial increase in capacity. Okay. All right. Now the work's complete. Thanks very much for coming on. We'll get that app on your phone so you can see what's all going. Right. But uh, appreciate you coming in, mate. Thank you very much. I, I feel reassured now that it's been done by a professional company. There's a lot of people who try these sort of things at home and there's no end of problems with the wrong size cabling and all sorts of other issues. So thanks very much Solar and Sat.